Hello everyone, so a few days ago I've came across a new model that can be used to animate portrait images very effectively and it's called Live Portrait. And as you can see, you can use a video recording as a reference and with a single portrait image, you can use Live Portrait to replicate the movements present in the video. And I was really impressed with the results, especially the accurate and realistic capture of the eyes and lips movement. So I wanted to share this with you and we'll see later on on this video how is that all achieved using Live Portrait. But first I will show you how to install and use Live Portrait. It's quite simple. And then we'll take a quick look on the paper they released for this model. And by the way, I really like it when they release the paper along with the code because then we can reproduce the same results that they reported in the paper. And on top of that, we can better understand the different contributions that's been made. So if you find this video helpful in any way and you want me to do more like this one, just let me know in the comment section. All right, so now let's get started. Okay, so first of all, we will install Live Portrait and let's head over to the GitHub repository. And by the way, all the links are available in the description. So here we have the GitHub repository page. You can access the paper from this uh, button and you can see more details about the project from this one. So this is the different results obtained uh, using Live Portrait. But first, let's go to the installation section which is this one. And by the way, if you want to try it without installation, you can try the Hagen's face space that they created for Live Portrait. And you can access that space from this link over here, Hagen face space. So to install Live Portrait, the first thing we need to do is to clone the repository. Then we need to create the Conda environment and install the different dependencies. After that, we just need to download some pre-trained weights and we will be all set to try Live Portrait on our local machines. So you just need to copy this command and in the directory where you need to install it, you simply launch command prompt and here just paste the git clone command and we just need to wait a little bit for the repository to be cloned. So there we have it. So the next step is to uh, access that repository on our command prompt using the cd command. After that, we need to create our conda environment and activate it. So you simply need to copy both of these commands. And by the way, you can use other virtual environment, but you need to set the specific Python version, which is here 3.918. And then you need to install the other requirements as well. So here, let's say yes. All right, so now the Conda environment is created. We need to activate it. So we're gonna use this command. And then we need to install the different requirements. And now we need to wait for the different dependencies to be installed. It's gonna take a while to download. So I will fast forward this part for you so you don't have to wait. All right, so now we have all the dependencies installed and our Conda environment is ready. So the next step is to verify that you have ffmpeg installed in your machine. I already have it installed, so I'll skip this step. And for the next one, we need to download the pre-trained weights for this model. So either you can download them from Hugging Face by cloning this repository, or you can download them directly from Google Drive. Uh, so I will go to the Google Drive link. And after downloading them, we need to place them in the pre-trained weights uh, directory. So here we have the weights. So what we need to do is click on download all and then a zip file will be created and we just need to wait for it. So I will fast forward again so you don't have to wait. All right, so let's go back to the repository and verify the directory structure and where we need to put the weights. We need first to extract the weights. So in Live Portrait, here we have both uh, folders for the trained weights and we need to put them under the pre-trained weights uh, directory. So simply slide them under that directory and that's it. So now we simply run the Gradio web application. And to do that, we simply need to open a command prompt in this directory and then activate our uh, conda environment, so conda activate 
live portrait and then simply run the app.py python file all right so here we have the url for the web application and you simply can copy it and over here you can access it on any browser so here we have the live portrait uh, web application and it's pretty simple and straightforward uh, interface so here we have the source portrait for example we can use the mona lisa and then uh, we can use a driving video sequence we can upload our own uh, video sequences or use the examples here so let's use the first example and let's see it so here we have some facial expressions and then to animate the Mona Lisa portrait with these uh, facial expressions we simply click on animate all right so here we have the result so let's play the sequence all right amazing so this is the compared view so we have the driving sequence the input image and then the result i'd say it's quite impressive let's try another one and then change the driving sequence to this one with more extreme facial expressions all right let's animate it and visualize the result and here we can see the advancement of the animation it's taken uh, around two minutes all right so here we have the generated video sequence it took around two minutes to finish animating the portrait and the resulted video sequence is half a minute and that's pretty fast i would say that's quite powerful all right so let's see the comparison between both sequences amazing amazing results all right so now let me show you something else which is the retargeting modules so here we have two hyperparameters that we can uh, play with to adjust the eye openness and the lip openness as well so for example let me show you if we use this portrait and we choose a very high target lip and eye open ratio and we click on retargeting as you can see the eye is wide open to the max and the lips as well so we need to tune these parameters to adjust the eye openness as well as the lip openness and we'll see later on more details about the retargeting module from the paper so that's it for the this quick demonstration for live portrait and maybe i'll test it even more and show you the results at the end of this video all right so now let's move on to the paper you can access it from here the project page and then you have the link for the paper here all right all right so here we have the paper for live portrait so it was mainly developed by kaishu technology and as we can see in the abstract it is indicated that uh, live portrait diverges from the mainstream diffusion based methods to explore and uh, expand on the potential of the implicit key point based framework and as mentioned in the methodology section below it builds upon and enhances the video based portrait animation framework that is known as vid to vid and that was introduced by nvidia in 2021 so as it is mentioned here it introduces several enhancements to balance the efficiency and quality the first enhancement is the large data set that they trained it on which is made of high quality frames and that was clearly reflected on the results that we've seen earlier they also went with a mixed image video training strategy where an image is used as a source and then we use a driving video sequence and they improved the optimization objectives and other technical details and we'll see a little bit about that later on 
but I think the most notable enhancement that they presented in this paper is that they used the implicit key points to effectively represent what they called the bland shapes. So the bland shapes are basically predefined facial expressions, such as smiling, frowning, or raising eyebrows. So with these key points, they were able to seamlessly manipulate those bland shapes. Also, they utilize stitching and retargeting modules, uh, as we've seen earlier. So briefly, the main mission of the stitching module is to paste the animated portrait back into the original image without pixel misalignment. It's also used to restitch cropped face images back into place after animating them, like what's shown here in the first figure uh, in the paper. As for the retargeting module, its main purpose is eyes and lips retargeting. So as we've seen in the demonstration, it allows for more controllability over the eyes and lips. So it allows to control the eye uh, openness and to fine tune the lip closure. And we'll go through more technical details about this module later. So obviously the eyes and lip movement are crucial to convey a realistic animation. And even a slightly weird eye movement or a slow eye gaze can ruin the whole animation and make it look uh, more fake. And that's also true for the lips movement during speech. So this retargeting module is used to tackle this issue meaning that they ensure a lifelike eye behavior and adjust lip shapes to match the desired expression provided by the driving video input. All right, so these are the main components for live portrait. And from what we've seen, it's pretty fast, even on my six gigabytes uh, VRAM, but it's reported that it can reach 12.8 milliseconds per generation on an RTX 4090 GPU. So now let's continue with the paper and check the uh, model training process. So the training is conducted over a two phases process. The first phase pipeline is shown in this figure. So we start from the left side with two inputs, a source portrait image and a driving video clip. Then the first step is to extract the appearance and motion features. So here the appearance features as well as the implicit key points are extracted from the source image. We also calculate the driving implicit key points. The key points are calculated using the following equations. And as we mentioned before, these kind of key points extraction were introduced in the vid to vid paper. And in that paper, we can see why they chose that type of transformation to apply to the canonical key points. So for example, this is what we call canonical key points. And by applying some transformation, we obtain the implicit key points. But in the live portrait paper, they actually modified these equations to account for the scaling factor that they introduced. And the next step is to use a warping module, which will use these key points to generate a flow field that is then used to warp the extracted appearance features. Now going back to the NVIDIA paper, here we have more details about the warping module. So these flows are basically used to map points from the feature space of the driving video to the feature space of the source image, and they are defined as such. And then the warped source features are concatenated and passed to a UNET feature extractor. And then by applying a softmax function, we obtain the flow composition mask, which is then combined linearly with the warping flow maps to get the final warping map noted W. And by applying it to the source features, we get the output of the warping component, which is WFS. And now as a final step, we pass that to the decoder and we get the output image after applying few upsampling operations. So in the vid to vid paper, they used different architectures for the appearance and motion extraction. So they used a downsampling CNN, a UNET and a ResNet. But in the present paper, the live portrait model uses a single model architecture for all extractors, which is the convnext v2 tiny. Now this is basically the first phase of training and it's quite similar to the training process in the vid to vid paper as we've seen. But here they also updated the uh, loss function or the objective uh, function. The loss is a combination of perceptual and GAN losses. And during the first training phase, the appearance and motion extractors are trained fully from scratch as well as the warping and decoder modules. So in the first phase, we train all the components from scratch. Now let's go to the second phase of the training process. The appearance and motion extractor are frozen, as well as the warping module and the decoder, and only the stitching and retargeting modules are trained during this phase. So let's see it in more details in this figure. So here we can see the input and outputs for both modules. 
The one in the top is the stitching module and the other two are retargeting modules. So the process for the stitching modules is quite straightforward. Using the implicit key points obtained from the previous step, it estimates a stitching deformation offset of the driving key points. Then the driving implicit key points are updated by adding that uh, calculated or estimated offset. And using the decoder, we can obtain the predicted image. And by comparing it to what we call uh, a self-reconstructed image, we can calculate the loss as follows. Now they call the self-reconstructed image the image obtained uh, by passing the source input image as both the source and the driving image, as we can see in this notation. As for the retargeting modules, a similar process uh, is conducted. It takes as input the source implicit key points as usual and the source I open condition, which is estimated from the source image. And then using a random I open driving scalar, the offset is calculated. And we finish similarly to what we have with the stitching modules by calculating the losses for these modules. So that's it for the second phase of the training. Now, as you may have noticed, they didn't talk in details about the architecture that they used for both the retargeting and the stitching modules. But we can check that in the source code since this is an open source project. So that concludes basically the training methodology that they used. Now, I won't go over the remaining parts of this paper. I was mainly interested in the training methodology and the architecture that they chose. However, if you're interested, they conducted several experiments with their model and pointed out the points of strength and weaknesses. So feel free, of course, to check it out. And that's it for this video. I hope that you find it interesting and informative and see you in the next one.